Morning all, morning all. Lovely fine morning on my way to work. Recover from the lots of wind and rain last night. Seems to be quite pleasant. Watching the um, Benny Boy bike video recently on what was your first car? I was just thinking, what's the first car you remember? The first car I remember was my dad's old Hred Escort. As in the suffix plate ones. Uh, what year will that have been? I could even guess. Been the uh, early 70s, I presume. And I remember the, I can't remember the numbers, but it was Spy was the first bit of the number plate. I remember that for various reasons. That was the first car I used to drive in, or I used to be a passenger in. And also, it had vinyl seats. Uh, those of you, over 30, certainly over 35, will probably remember these. If you used to have to wear shorts to school, and you used to get into it on a hot afternoon, you used to have to sit on your hands to burn the skin off your legs. Those were the days. It also got me thinking about when I used to do uh, long, or longer car journeys when I was uh, younger things we remember from the longer car journeys and one of them was um, the music my parents used to listen to they were mainly into the Beatles then I remember mainly from the uh, late night journeys back from grandparents or visiting friends and relatives they used to play back in the USSR because my sister always used to fall asleep in the car because the jet plane bit's quite loud in it we just wonder if it'd wake her up. And every time that bit of USSR came on, looking across, thinking, will she wake up? So the other thing I remember was long journeys and trying to play this travel chess set I had. I'm trying to play travel chess and travel drafts in the car. It was a black and silver board. It was only, what, three, four inches square. It used to make me feel sick because of the sort of weird perception of the movement of the squares even though they weren't. Those were the days when we were young. So my parents car history as far as I remember it, there was the old Escort, there was the uh, little old T-Reg Fiesta and then they uh, got a prefix plate car which is a D-Reg Escort in brown. There's a lot of Fords going on in my parents history. What do they have? Did they get anything off that? Oh, I think they got a um, and our, no, they went to a G-Reg Rover 216 after that. Saloon type rather than a hatchback. Yes, yeah, so we had the Red Rover 216, and there was that which was a G-plate. Then there was the R-Edge Escort. Then they got a 51-plate Focus, and then my dad ended up getting a, a pre-Reg 54-plate Mondeo. Obviously, I've moved out long enough by the time that had happened. They did tend to hang on to their cars for a while. Yeah, my mum's now got a 54 plate Focus and my dad's got, got a new, I'm not sure, I think it's a 14 reg diesel Focus, now he's retired. That's my parents' car history. So, but uh, moving on to my cars, <clears throat> I didn't actually buy my first car until I was about 24, just because money and uh, being a student at the time and living where I couldn't really have a car, but I ended up buying a Series 3 Land Rover on a Q-plate. turned out it was a Bitzer. They made it out of a Series 2A chassis with a Series 3 station wagon body on it. That was a great thing. I sold it in bits because the chassis was going. I sold it in bits for more than a, well, a good chunk of what I paid for it in the first place. And then I got a G-Reg Granada 2.4 litre V6 and that got stolen. So I moved on to an M-Reg Escort, which was meant to be a stopgap car, but ended up being a car for a couple of years. And I got an MGF for a bit. Got rid of that when the head gasket went. And I had a Jaguar XJ6 3.6 straight six, that was an average one. And then I went to a 125 Honda, CG125. Then I got a D-Reg Renault 21 as a stopgap car was another one I had for a couple of years. What I go to after that, I got a Vectra for a while, 2002 Vectra. Got rid of that, got Fiat Brava. Wrote that off, bought an Alpha. 
156. And then I uh, I've sold that for a Renault Grand Scenic. <clears throat> now that's gone for an automatic Citroen C4, so Mrs. Lurch can learn to drive because she won't drive a manual. What I can say is I'm glad I've still got the bike. There's too many wheels and no clutch in the, in the Citroen. So yeah, my parents' car history, my memories of my parents' car history, and my car history. And bike history. Probably waffled on enough. Concentrate on the traffic and get through some of these queues now. Right, so everybody, I'll catch you all again soon.